Now my hand is in European Union now. In Europe! Midnight in Nicosia. This is me in the capital, Nicosia. The only capital in the world that's divided between two countries. By simply crossing this line, Jordan passport also? I would be in Europe and the EU, and it's called the Republic of Cyprus. On the other side, there's the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, not recognized by any country. This green line separates them across the island. The UN forces are stationed on this line, which they call buffer zone. Nicosia is a divided capital. Whenever we go, we're going to see a border. Our island is very small to divide the two parts. Before we live together. This is Cyprus right here. Europe is here. This is the only area from which you can cross. However, why are they separated in the first place and how its population lives? Cyprus is Britain's base in the Middle East. And the Middle East is under constant pressure. For them, we are not existing country. All right, guys, we're going to northern Cyprus. It's part of Turkey, it doesn't need a visa, but it's an international airport. We're going to northern Cyprus. There's northern Cyprus and southern Cyprus. There's also Britain and the UN. This island has a story. Cyprus, whose problem has threatened to split NATO, is in fact vital to NATO. We are now North Cyprus, Nicosia. Ergen Airport. Yes. North Cyprus. North Cyprus. No yeah. need visa. <laughs> no. <laughs> Can I have? Let's go. By the way, Nicosia is the last divided capital in the world. The only divided capital in the world. The, the Greek, Greek and Turkish. Turkish. Throughout modern history, Cyprus has never been Greek. The story began when the Ottomans occupied Cyprus Island in 1571. They stayed there for three centuries until 1878, when the Ottomans passed the administration of the island over to Britain. Ottoman Empire rent our island for British. To stir up Britain to stand with them in their war against Russia. With the beginning of World War I in 1914, the Ottomans stood with Germany against Britain and the Allies. So Britain decided to totally take control of the island and occupy it. They create the roads for them. They change the constitution. Until the independence in 1960. By which, after 82 years of British administration, Cyprus formally became a republic. That country has three guarantors, Turkey, Greece and England. And we start to live in together. Midnight in Nicosia, and Sir Hugh Foote entering Parliament is followed by Archbishop Makarios, who is to take over as first President of Cyprus. The Greek Cypriots didn't like the constitution provisions and they worked on changing it, which led to conflicts against the Turkish Cypriots, the most brutal of which was the massacre committed by the extremist organization of Ioka in December 1963. The number of murders committed by Ioka, the underground terrorist organization, steadily mounted. So, do you see this house? It's on the borders. In 1974, the Greek Cypriots opened fire here. Look at the house. As the demand for partition became insistent. 1974, mm. the Turkey troops landed and in two parts, the Happy Peace Operation complete. At this beach, exactly 40 years ago, the Turkish forces landed here to save the Turkish Cypriots. Che 974, it's a landing ship who carried the Turkish troops to the, this island. The Turkish airborne invasion had begun. The Turkish forces took control of 37% of the island. Over a thousand Turkish troops land on the plains around Gonyeli, less than two miles from Nicosia. Well, what's the reason behind the Turkish forces' intervention? In 1974, the terrorist organization IOKA consolidated with some members of the Greek military government to execute a coup against Archbishop Makarios, the president of Cyprus. It was a conspiracy to join the island to Greece. It was an attempted coup against Makarios in July. 
It started with ethnic cleansing operations against Turkish Cypriots. Targeting Turkish Cypriots. Which led Turkey to launch an armed intervention to protect Turkish Cypriots, who were minorities in the island representing 18% of all Cypriots. In 1983, the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus was announced. The UN didn't recognize this country and called the Turkish forces to evacuate it and considered it an occupation. The Green Line was set to separate two countries spanning 180 kilometers east to west of the island. In a way, it's good to be removed because, well, it's a good step forward towards a peace movement, a solution movement. Efforts are ongoing to unify the island. Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots alike who want to end the division of their country. Greek Cypriots have voted 76% no for this solution. Without any advances so far. So we are in the north. We are in the north. This is the south. Buffer zone and south. Cyprus Republic, where are we are? Northern Cyprus. This is northern Cyprus. This is the Turkish side. And this, this is what they call the Green Line. This is under the control of the UN. They are the ones who set this area, called buffer zone, demilitarized to avoid problems between them. It's a whole line you're seeing, and those are crossing borders now. Yeah, now they're passing south to north now. So I can, I can pass now? Yes, you can pass. You she go? can pass? No, she can't. She needs a visa because I have a new passport I can pass. Yeah, I need a visa. This green line that's forbidden to walk in, the UN took control of it. But the Turkish came and took control of it and built a football field on it. The ball got out and he ran quickly to get it back because they can't walk on this line. It's a demilitarized zone. This is the gate that gets you into the buffer zone. The Turkish are the ones who built that field. <laughs> They're the only ones allowed to get in there. If I get in, I'll go to jail. I'll get deported right away. So you don't want to go? No, I cannot go. I don't want to go to jail. I don't have visa. I don't have... Uh, no, I cannot go. Let's, let's drink Turkish coffee. You get Turkish coffee here or some tea. The UN is here. <laughs> These borders are so complicated, by the way. It may be easier for Europeans to cross here, but it's hard for the Turkish. It's so strange being divided, seeing the other side, I can't go to it. You need a visa to cross? I need a Schengen visa, yes. So you're only in the northern side? Yes. You lived in it for seven years? Yes. You couldn't cross to the south? Um, I look at it from far away. Over there, in that park, there's a small cafe. You can greet people. Some days there are concerts and get together and they say hello from far away at best. But also there's the UN and the military. A lot of them come to get fuel or go to the market, they get their things and go back. They come here because it's cheaper. Of course, there they have Euro, here it's Lira. It's nice to meet you. What's your name? Walid. Walid. Seven years locked in Northern Cyprus. Locked to Cyprus. <laughs> he couldn't go to the southern side. Soon, if Allah wills. If Allah wills. God bless you. Now we are at the North Cyprus, my whole body. But now my hand, is in European Union now. In Europe! I'm crossing to Europe now. And now we are come back again. We come back? Why? Because I want to use Turkish currency. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cheap. <laughs> yeah. This is South Cyprus, Cyprus Republic. And this okay. is the fence that divided us. He said this divided us. They divided? Yeah, these things divide us easily. That's Cyprus. That's a street in Cyprus. Europe is here. If you cross, you'll be in Europe. Even the UN is not here. It's over there. Greek souvlaki is here. Turkish kebab is here. Only steps away in this island, this wondrous country. For the passing uh, here, oh. you need passport, you need visa, you need lots of documents. Just to pass here? Yes, to borders. But they looking, looking if someone else Jump. Pass, jump and pass here. That looks easy. Yeah, it looks easy, but there is a military place. The police are everywhere. Hello. How is the weather there? Nice. How is Europe? Europe. <laughs> Europe. <laughs> Goodbye. Some people dream of getting into Europe, but why people can easily go from Morocco, Tunisia and Libya and 
before crossing to the Greek Cyprus, we had to go deeper in this place. If the Turkish Northern Cyprus is not internationally recognized, only recognized by Turkey, how do most of the global brands have stores here? Now we are going to middle of the Nicosia. Nicosia is the capital city of North Cyprus. But there's so many brands here, like international. Yes, we're going to see the brands. We're going to see Armani Exchange. We're going to see Guess. These are all the original brands. They open a branch here, but uh, they don't recognize us. I don't know how. For them, we are not existing country. Why there isn't a lot of tourists coming here? There's the sea, the nature, and the markets. Can you imagine that only a few people know about it and visit it? It doesn't need a visa if you're coming from Turkey. You should know that we're in the capital. It's the only divided capital in the world. Let me tell you more. The Nicosia surrounded with walls. Okay. And we are at the middle. In the middle. And this walls and Nicosia divided into two parts. Now we are at the north part. He said it's divided northern and southern sides. The north is Turkish and the south is Greek. The announcer warned the Turkish community in Cyprus to evacuate their homes and find shelter underground. After 74, 60,000 Turkish people come to north side. Nearly 200,000 Greek Cypriots go to south and then divide the two parts of our island. We are going into Bukhan, which made by Ottoman Empire. They say that the Ottomans occupied this island for three centuries. That's why you'll find Turkish Cypriots in it. And also Greek Cypriots. You'll feel like you're in Turkey. It's all Turkish kebab. We're here now, do you see? This is the capital. This is the Turkish side, and this is Cyprus. From Turkish Cyprus and at the island's coastline, between it and Greek Cyprus, there's a ghost town. Far or shot. Guys, we're in a Miami-like beach, but it's in northern Cyprus. Nobody lives there. This is Varosha, Marash in Turkish. It's been a ghost town since 1974. This is a demilitarized area. Varosha begins here. It's the city with zero inhabitants. Look how it's closed. Cars are not allowed to enter it. Only small electric cars or bicycles inside. This is Varosha. Nobody lives here. Zero. Yeah, this is abandoned ghost town. This tea abandoned in 1974. It's a political issue between these two nations, like Greek Cypriots, Turkish Cypriots. It's controlled by the Turkish Cypriot police. They want to check the bags on. Yes, yes. Okay, we've entered Verosha. This area is under the control of the UN. A whole city, houses, hotels, resorts that you see by the sea. Nobody lives there. An empty city. Nobody can live here. Like the city in Japan. There was due to radiation. Here because of a conflict. We can take this one. This is the only one allowed. It became a tourist attraction. This became a ghost town after Turkey came in 1974, and it's been closed ever since, for all, until 2020. In 2020, they opened it for the public, but cars are not allowed. Look, closed. You can't pass from here, even on foot. 
uh, Varosha, which uh, forms approximately six kilometers. And this is the border for passing because only five or four kilometers open to walking. Everywhere you'll find cafes, hotels and resorts. There's a lot of Greek Cypriots now demanding to get their resorts and houses. But it's under the control of both UN and Turkish Cypriot police. They say that all people that left this city all have their house keys. Greek Cyprus, just like Palestine in 1948, when we got out of our homes and the keys of our grandfathers are with us. The same thing, it's an ongoing case, it's not over yet, but it's not comparable to the largest case in the world. The disputed case of Palestine and the ethnic cleansing happening in Palestine. This is a hotel behind me. Look how trees grew on it for 40 years. Look how this hotel is abandoned and the trees grew by themselves. It's an empty city. Nobody's here. But I wish one day it will be sold and... Scared at night? Yeah, it must be. <laughs> Farewell. I'm crossing the borders now. Okay, I'll be back in three hours. Going to Europe. I have my passport. Not everybody can cross. Well, goodbye. Bye. See you. See you. Take care, guys. We had to cross to the other side. To Europe. We got in without any stamp. Easily. I'm considered in Europe now. It only took me three seconds. He only checked my passport, looked at it and said, you can pass. Now I'm in the Republic of Cyprus, Southern Cyprus, Greek Cyprus. I want to see how it's different from the Turkish Northern Cyprus. The currency here, if I withdraw, it'll be euros. This is the European side, the Greek side. Okay, we crossed the borders and met with Anas. From southern Cyprus. Hello. You have a Cypriot citizenship? Yes, because my grandmother is from Cyprus. Can you speak Greek? I'm fluent, yes. My grandmother is from Cyprus. I mean, from the Greek and Turkish Cyprus. But my grandmother married my Palestinian grandfather. Walking around, you see pictures and flags, they want to reunite, they're sad about it. They want a reunion. Are these houses abandoned? This is a shop. Yes, it's abandoned. These all closed during the war. 40 years ago, they all closed. 40 years ago, correct. In this side and the Turkish side. Did I mistakenly film policemen? No photos. No photos, sorry. <laughs> what are those people doing there? They're watching these military areas. From the European side, watching the Turkish side? Yes. This is the line that splits the map? This is the one split in the map. It separates the two countries. People here can easily go to the other side, but others can't. It's normal. Many from the Greek side go to the Turkish side. They go shopping and they go to get fuel because it's cheaper and there's halal food. And the others can't come here? There's a difference between a Turkish Cypriot and a Turkish person. A Turkish Cypriot is from the island. Turkish and Greek Cypriots are from the island. They can go to each other normally. Now we're in the Greek Nicosia, the European side. There are Muslims here, but there are few, most of which are immigrants, the majority are Christians. But there's a mosque in the Greek side and another one by the sea. We went up a small hill where you can clearly see the two sides. You can see everything from here, right? Yes, everything. Across all line of sight. It's clear. Over there, that's the Northern Cyprus flag. At night, it is illuminated. Did you see the Northern Cyprus flag? It's drawn on the mountain. While you're in the Greek side, you can see the flag 
so big and clear on the mountain from here. It may be a little provocative. They tried to do the same thing, but there isn't a similar mountain. <laughs> but imagine that you'll see all this large land. You can see the Turkish side, and here you're in the Greek side. Here is Europe, and over there is Turkey. And the location of the island is wondrous, with three continents next to it. Africa, Asia, and Europe. That's why it's in a strategic location, but what is Britain doing here? Britain? Back in the day, it occupied this place. So they set bases? They set bases, yes. They stayed here? Yeah. The British are always the source of conflicts in all the countries that they left. They have to be present. They have to leave a footprint on this island. They have to. And they did. But it's a weird feeling looking at this mountain and maybe there are people over there from the Turkish side looking over here thinking the same thing, saying why don't we reunite? But it's a beautiful island, right? Yes, it is. Who leaves it? Nobody. Nobody leaves his land. On the contrary. Unless being compelled. We met a Turkish Cypriot family on the Greek side. How did you live before 1974 as Cypriots? Very well. The Greek and Turkish Cypriots lived together? Yes, they lived together. We lived together, there were no problems. You see? After that, Britain was the cause of all of this? Of course, Britain ruined everything. Britain because, at the time, was ruling here. Cypriots had British passports? Yes, they did. They controlled the whole country, you see? So your origins are from Cyprus? Yes, I am. I was born in 1948. The year of the Palestinian Nakba? Yes, the year of the Nakba. The British were in Palestine and also in Jordan. Cyprus as well. Everywhere there was the British. But here they were ruling. The president has to be Greek and the prime minister had to be a Turkish Muslim. That's how it used to be. Then who caused the problem? They started removing the Turkish from their positions. So the rulers of Cyprus used to be Greek and Turkish? Greek and Turkish, a Greek president and a Turkish prime minister. Our passports were written in English, Turkish and Greek. It had three languages. This is my grandmother's passport from before 1974, when they were under British occupation. British passport Cyprus. After 1974 and the separation, it became in Turkish, Greek, and English. Okay. To Jordan, 1954. She also went to Lebanon by the British passport. Syria memories. This is southern and this is northern. This gets you into all of Europe and all the world with ease. But the Turkish Cypriot won can only get you into Turkey. The majority want the borders to be open. So what is the solution in your opinion right now? Right now, we're living, but I think it's only temporary. Is it possible that it gets resolved and you all live in a unified island? If Allah wills, if Allah wills. But I think that the other side won't accept living together. Why? They're afraid that what happened here before happens again. There must be guarantees. Yes, there must be because most of the lands are for the Turkish, not the Greek. I really wish that we all lived together, here, like we used to. A huge gas reserve was discovered by the island east of the Mediterranean, which provoked a conflict close to military confrontation between Greece and Turkey, which sees that it has the right to share this reserve with others based on international law. Turkish Republic of Cyprus has equal rights to gas fields, the latest 2022 elections in northern Cyprus resulted in the win of the candidate of the party that adopts the Turkish government vision for the solution that results in two independent countries that are recognized and there is no island unification solution. After failed efforts for a solution, most importantly, the UN's request to unify the island in 2004, which was rejected by the Greek Cypriots. So what would the future of this island be, in your opinion?